here's the uh, our uh, job. So we're going to replace this, and hopefully, when it's finished, it looks something like that. So I will give you a few tips uh, if you're doing it for the first time. Just go out. I went to Johnson's Lumber, bought a roll of copper, and uh, got started. So and uh, copper nails as well. And I think they are. Let's see. Where are they? Uh -oh. They're an inch and a quarter. And also, when you buy those nails, you want to get a punch. Which will punch through the copper and allow you to get the nail started. And that punch is the wall in um, Home Depot. And it's been very useful. So, okay, so what I'd like to do is I like to I like my copper to go at least maybe two at least two inches down on the piling, maybe two and a quarter or half. And uh, so I like I like uh, I like to look like it has the meat on the side. In comparison to let's see, I did that one yesterday. To this one, this is was done by the contractor, and I don't like the look of that. I mean, it's an older tarnished copper, but this overlap here is a bit weak, and um, I don't really care for it. So the last year I did this one, and you can see it's. Uh, it's that one there, I think is, uh, what is that? Yeah, that's uh, two and a half inches. So I like that look. So what we'll do on the piling is we'll take, it's, we'll find that the narrowest part of the circle, because pilings aren't exactly round, and I measure that, then I add, two and a half inches to that uh, times two, so it's five inches. So I take the diameter of the narrowest part, add five inches to it. And it's okay to add another quarter or whatever because when you go to trim the copper out, um, it, you know, it's all right to waste maybe just a little bit of copper to get, make sure you get it right. So then I cut the copper out to the to right uh, uh, length on the roll. Um, in this case, it was 13 and a half, 13 and a half inches. So, start from there. Then, I take the copper and I lay it over top of the piling. And I use my fingers to make sure it's centered. Now, uh, when I took a narrow a measurement of the diameter, I cut that much off of the roll. The width is constant. Uh, so I got the wider copper because my pine is a little thicker. But um, so I make make sure I line it up to where that uh, 13 and a half inches is in line with the narrow diameter of the piling. So I get that two and a half inches. So I lay that on there like that, and I get it. Uh, I got a mallet, a rubber mallet. I actually form holding it st steady on top of the piling. I actually form the top of the piling into the copper. That sets my alignment, and then I mark it. So, I, so as I fabricate this top, it'll go exactly where it uh, where it was when I molded it. So here, as you can see, what I did is I got the mounting on top here, so I'll show you what I need. So on, with downward force, not sideward force, because that would shift the plate. Is I basically tapped on the copper to create this ring to uh, match the top of the piling. So what I'll do now is on the bottom, I'll take a Sharpie and I'll mark where, I'll mark on the piling, I'll mark on the copper. That way I'll have a, a alignment point. So as I move further on in this process, I'll always be able to take it back to the place that it was uh, set at when I molded the top or shaped the top.
if you can see that. So now what I have is I have a piece of copper with the top of the piling imprinted into the copper. And if I flip it over, I have that little mark there that tells me where it belongs on the piling. So what I'll do now is I'll measure off how far to cut down off of that, that imprint. And what I have is I have with uh, some scrap copper, I kind of just cut this piece here. And I put a measurement on the top where I want that imprint to lie. And then, um, and then down here is just where I'm gonna make a mark. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. I'll lay the imprint there like so. And I'll put a mark here. Like so. And I'll do that all the, all the way around. And that gives me exact uh, two, this particular one is like two and a half inches all the way around. Now you can adjust this and make your own little tab and uh, to whatever length you want. But it's very helpful to be able to, take, to put a line here and line it up against something. So, okay, so I took my little Sharpie and my little tab and I marked all the way around the circle here. Now, let me tell you, uh, I'm an engineer, so I'm all about being consistent and having a process and doing things better. So um, I believe uh, this is a, a very controlled way of being consistent about how your caps go on. So um, uh, before I go any further, um, it's important to uh, wear gloves if copper will have sharp edges. Um, so let's go ahead and trim this off with some shears. Sure. Here. And I'll see how that looks. So another tip, um, the shears here, um, they're from Home Depot. And um, so some, some shears are straight, designed for straight, some of them are designed for curves. Um, some of them you wanna cut one direction and you'll see it doesn't cut as well. If you cut the other direction, it cuts much better. So um, there is a technique for using the shears, but once again, make sure you wear gloves and, um, and everything should be okay, a little practice. Okay, there's a completed piece. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll cut sections here, uh, about two inches. Uh, some people go wider, some people go narrower, but um, you know, you figure each cut you're going to put a, a nail in, copper nail in. So I do about two inches, um, maybe maybe an inch and between an inch and a half and two inches, probably closer to two inches. Now I have it on top of the pile, and you'll see once you once you line it up with the mark you have on the bottom, you'll see the the imprint. If you get if you got a okay imprint, um, you'll see it'll fit. It'll just sit right on top of the. Uh, Piling. Now you'll see, because when I made the cuts, I was consistent the way I uh, continued to make the cuts around around the diameter. So the tabs are actually positioned where they're going to fall on one another correctly. So you see, this edge will be up that edge on top of this edge. This edge will be up, which will be on top of that edge. This edge will be up, which will be on top of that edge. So you go all the way around that way and make sure that's consistent. And you'll and just keep an eye on to make sure the tabs don't get uh, twisted the wrong way. So one is on top of the other, on top of the other, like just like shingles on a roof, all the way around. Now take your time when you put these tabs down. No rush, right? Um, so just kind of like push, 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 and look at the direction I'm going in. Actually, I'm pushing one on top, one on top of the other. Just gonna go all the way around. And we just keep doing that until it's nice and tight against the piling. Okay, so I pushed it down as much as I can with my hand. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a rubber mallet and I'm gonna go all the way around here. I'm gonna start slow, copper soft, 
even though you used to hit it too hard. It's gonna go all the way around. And don't use the metal, don't use the metal hammer because you want a nice, smooth, professional look on the cap. Um, just take your time. Okay, so I went around this thing, starting at the top, trying to get these dimples down a little bit, smooth them out and just went around a couple times and I worked my way and I finished off with the lower part here. And you can see that looks pretty good. Now, let me show you my next trick. So, the nice thing about doing these is I'm going to do it, trying to get the camels in there uh, and keep it that tight. So, I'm going to do a tight fit for the part that's on it. And right now, I'll go ahead and get one of these ratchet straps and see how well it works around the filing. It actually it works very well. It tightens, tightens these up. Um, so I'll show you that. Now, uh, just so you know, what I do is I, I don't do any more than two holes at a time. You can do one hole at a time, be safe. But sometimes as you move around with these holes, they'll push, they'll push the tab over a little bit. So if you put too many, uh, two or three holes, you'll see that if this strap's not tight enough, this nail can push that tab over and it'll cover that hole and then you, then you can't get the nail in the hole or the nail ends up going in crooked. So, you know, take your time, do one at, one at a time and if you, you feel like the, the holes aren't shifting or try two at a time and then put the nails in. When I say, I'm talking about using the hole punch. So don't, don't uh, use the hole punch. Don't go all the way around with the hole punch. Just one or two, one or two, all the way around. And that way you maintain some control. Okay. If you got a lot of pilings to do, as you do this, you get better at it, you get faster, and uh, then you'll have a good product. Now, because um, this strap has these um, a lock, you know, the little locking tabs here, um, or hooks, um, it's not compressing this area very well, and sometimes you can't get underneath here. So all you gotta do is loosen that up and rotate it. So do as many as you can in the strap area, like right here. Then when you get close to this, just loosen this up. Make sure your top's still tight down on the piling. And uh, reposition uh, the strap and lock it down again and continue on. So I just put my last nail in. You can see how they're laid out. So now I'll just take uh, the strap off. Okay, so I like the way it came out. Looks good. Top looks good. It's exactly lined up with the top of the piling. So you want to have a piling more like this in comparison to Let's see, go down here to the one that was done by my contractor when he put the pier in. Compare it to one like that, which isn't too bad, but let's see. We got a lot of them over here. Like that. I'm actually happier with what I produce. And I just started doing this yesterday. So, um, so I, you know, just take your time. And um, it's almost like an art when you start forming the copper over top of the uh, piling. Uh, you know, the copper is uh, $19 a foot, it's a little pricey, but it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake. And let me show you the label of the copper. I got wider copper uh, sheet because uh, my piling is wider, and then I wanted the additional uh, two and a half inches on the side, so I got the wider copper. So I can make sure I can do that. So here's the uh, label of um, what I have, and you can see it's 16 inches wide. So gives you a, a lot to play with, uh, or work with, and uh, it worked worked out good for my pilings. I think my pilings were maybe 11 inches, something like that, diameter. Some areas we it was consistently round, it was down to nine and a half inches. So, um, so that's it. So enjoy.